Welcome, welcome, everybody, welcome, 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 everybody here. Welcome, welcome, everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome, everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome, everybody, welcome here. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to our author's tea for March 2021. We're very honored that you've taken the time to be here with us this afternoon. This month, we're celebrating Women's History Month as well as International Women's Day. And of course, this is about honoring women who are making contributions to changing the world in our community, in the country, and beyond. We believe that women's empowerment is key because this speaks very directly to our mission at GVP which is a mission of empowering girls who will one day become the women that we celebrate. This is why we believe so much in educational equity. Educational equity is about making sure that every student has the support they need to be successful. This requires that we recognize the structural barriers that students face, which hinder their ability to access or fully participate in their education. This includes making sure that school resources are distributed fairly, that teachers are highly qualified to meet students' unique needs, and that educational content engages students of all backgrounds. We need to address and acknowledge the structural factors which stand in the way of every child having an equal act chance at success. We need to pay attention to the ways in which educational models can be more accessible and inclusive so that every child gets the support they need to succeed now you're going to be hearing from some of our amazing students during the course of today's program. You're going to hear a selection of student music honoring women in their communities. You're going to hear from a GVP alumnus, May Saad, who is also going to be honoring women who have been mentors to her, both within and outside GVP. We're going to hear a poem from our very own Jay Simpson Joseph. And then you're going to get the opportunity to listen to an interview that I hosted with our teachers here at GVP and to hear their perspectives on what's happening inside the classrooms of GVP, what inspires them to teach here and what um, keeps them excited about GVP's mission and our approach to education. So sit back, grab your cup of coffee or tea and enjoy the show. I hope that as you listen to the show, you'll continue to support GVP or if you haven't done so before, consider giving to GVP as you plan for your philanthropic investments this year. I'll come back later in the show with more information about how you can support our work. I'll see you in a bit. Enjoy the show. Welcome back. Here we are on this beautiful day in March. It's spring, so break out your florals and join us celebrating women International Women's Day, Women's History Month, women. As a girls school, we are always celebrating women every day, but today we're gonna celebrate the women in our community, the women that have shaped us and shaped our students. We'll just go ahead and get started. The first woman you're gonna hear from is our wonderful GVP alumna, May Saad. She just graduated from Agnes Scott College and is currently working for us as our ESOL intern and she's gonna honor some special women in her life. Then you're gonna hear a special never before published GVP song from our Women's Wisdom Unit. A couple of years ago, our GVP students interviewed women around Clarkston and then wrote songs about their lives. These women were inspirational for our students and we're so proud to share their stories with our community today. Take it away, Maysad. My name is Mesod, the year 2021. I'm truly grateful to have found myself being surrounded by a group of powerful women who I can call mentors. 
I have realized that I've made it through many challenges because of um, this support system. Without these women, I would have not made it this far. Therefore, I would like to thank each one of them for their willingness to be part of my journey. I would also like to honor them for transmitting their wisdom and knowledge and providing me the support I need. The first person I would like to honor is my mentor, Miss Mary Lou. Our journey started when we first met in 2011. Over the years, we have made many memories together by traveling to the Everglades, seeing plates, standing at the voting booth, going on college tours, and applying for my citizenship so I can travel the world. She has provided me with her guidance every step of the way in many areas of my life, such as advocating for myself, accomplishing my goal of finishing college, and going after my dream of becoming an educator. I would also like to honor my spiritual mentor, Joy, who I met this year. I'm grateful for her kindness and wanting the best for me in life. I'm very grateful for her encouragement in living a life that aligns with the values I have. Her mentorship has encouraged me to become more mature in my faith and live a life that makes a difference in others' lives. I am thankful that she has chosen to go on a journey with me of developing a strong self-worth. I wish to thank my writing mentor who I also met this year. I am thankful for her willingness to join my journey of strengthening my knowledge of my ethnic homeland Burma and my current history. I am thankful for her teaching of finding different ways to express myself and share my stories. Another person I want to thank is my inspiration mental Bertha. My journey as GVP would have not been the same without her. She has always been a great role model who I look to for inspiration. She carries confidence, resilience, and dedication that encourage me to want to work on these qualities within myself. Furthermore, she is a sister who I can always turn to for advice. I am truly grateful for this women in my life and I hope to continue to make many memories with them in the future. I've always been interested in many different things. I wanted to be a doctor and a farmer and work in agriculture. Yeah.
education and finances. The rich women to come out of the house to stop their social life and learn from each other. We can help your mom and sister find jobs. My God. stories from these women. At GVP, we believe strongly in the power of stories and telling our own stories and listening to stories from other women. And while it is International Women's Month, uh, we tell stories of powerful women all year long through our integrated units like Women's Wisdom or our LifeWorks unit where students dress up for the Wax Museum. We are continuously lifting up the voices of women um, to show our girls powerful women who look like them or come from similar backgrounds. This semester, we are studying women in careers and women who are human rights defenders. Next, you're going to hear from some women who I have personally learned a lot from over the years. First is Jay Simpson Joseph our diversity, equity, and inclusion specialist, who you may or may not know is also a poet. She has written us a poem entitled, A Day Tale. Then you're gonna hear from some of our teachers in their conversation with Elizabeth on why GVP is so special to them. A tale. She lived in a world where the mountains were her neighbors and the sky her kitchen floor. In order to get the chores done, she'd pin on her wings in the morning. She'd float and sweep at the same time, and she found housework to be a breeze. At night, lying in the curve of the moon, the black sky was her comforter. Tucked beneath its majesty, she felt free to roll over, with no fear of losing the covers. Daybreak found her sipping a juice glass of sunrise and leaping through the morning clouds in search of a good story. She liked to get up early before the kids started playing, dripping raindrops from the sky. Hidden beneath the snow-tipped mountain, fallen in a corner, she discovered a valley she'd forgotten was there. In its lush green beauty and serenity, she had a good cry. Afternoon again found her busy writing and working and preparing for nightfall, loving the red-blue-orange twilight and taking an evening stroll on a moonbeam, and of course always conscious of the morrow, singing in her mind, joy comes in the morning. So I'm really excited about this opportunity. Um, and you guys know that we wanted to use this time to just have a conversation for Arthur's tea with our teachers um, and just get your perspective on GVP, which I think is one of the most refreshing because you guys have the enviable position and also the difficult position sometimes of being with the students the most, right? And um, you know, having that contact that we're all, the rest of us are just craving just to interact with the students to see how they're doing. Um, but we wanted to take a little bit of a different angle rather than just talking about the students alone, but to talk about you guys and your motivations for being a GVP 
and your sort of GVP experience, because I think it's one that um, there's a lot of interest in. So, so my first question is, um, speaking of motivation, what made you choose BP, uh, GVP as a place to teach? Obviously, you could have been anywhere. Ben? Okay, I will start. And uh, uh, for me, it was working as case manager for refugees, welcoming girls and kids and going to register them and knowing our system in Africa, I was kind of shocked to see how kids were registered in grades, not depending on what they knew, but depending on their age. Mm -hmm. So when they see somebody is 15, they say ninth grade, and somebody does not even know how to write his name or her name. As a result, it was frustrating for the kids who were just praying day and night to turn 16 mm -hmm. and quit school. <laughs> but on the other side, when I came, I first came to GVP as case manager, driving the girls to start at GVP. My first girl I brought at GVP was Chantal Nishi. I don't know if Marjorie and wonderful girl nice but she has never been in school mm. so and how she was welcomed and after three months Chantal was able to write her name and to talk how are you doing so I said something special is going on here so I did to know what kind of curriculum was going on and just I became fan of GVP and I kept campaigning to all girls that I could be case worker to come to GVP. So, so I said, I'm bringing, and if I could be part of this special um, education system for our girls, for our refugees, I will do my best to be part of this team. And that's why I came to GVP and I'm sure I made the best decision ever of my life. That's an amazing answer. Thank you for that, Mr. Crispin. <laughs> Ms. Ann, what do you want to add? What has what has your experience been so far? Uh, uh, when I first came, uh, next year will be 10 years. And so I was here the third year of the program. And I was a newcomer teacher too. Um, and just being able to meet these girls and learn from them and um, from the from my coworkers has really what has kept me here. Um, just the music, I would sing the songs that Miss Elise taught us to my babies. You know, I've raised two children working here um, at the same time. I have this quilt that they made for my daughter Nina when I was off on maternity leave. It's just been a big part of my life and my um, you know work life community balance. It's just all integrated. Um, and then I was nodding because the flexibility to make our own curriculum, our own program that adapts, um, you know, and then I shifted into working with the second and third year students and adapting that curriculum to flow from year to year. And just the opportunity to stay with the same girls for mm -hmm. my first year, three years I was with them. Wow. And in education, we call that looping. So like staying with the same students and seeing them mm -hmm. grow. And now I loop two years with them and it's just amazing to see what they learn and what they teach each other and teach us. Um, it's truly inspiring. Um, and we've put together some great integrated units. So I get to work closely with my colleagues. Um, and I learned so much from Marjorie and from Elise and everyone and from Linda. Thank you. So and Ms. Marjorie, I'm going to come to you. What are some of the things that you've learned being a GVP, either from the students or just in general in your time here? I had taught 25 years before I came here. And so I have, and I have used everything I ever learned to try to do. <laughs> um, I do, I, I have learned to be able to try to meet them where they are, which is what we all try to do. Mm -hmm. And I've learned how resilient and how gritty and how 
brilliant. So, oh, these girls, they just blow me away. I mean, today we were doing a little reading activity and one of the kids I never thought, and it was, it was a higher level book because it was on the subject seasons that we're learning about and watching one of these students who hasn't been one of the higher readers suddenly say, oh, okay, I'll try and do such a, I almost started crying <laughs> because I was so proud of her. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thrilled that we've made it, that the classroom feels safe enough that she was willing to try. And then she was so successful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what I've learned is get to know the girls, get to know where they are, and then figure out what to do. And sometimes it's from girl to girl what to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Ms. Jasmine, if I, if I may put you on the spot, because you are the newcomer teacher, and I know that this is your first year as well. And Mr. Crispin has talked about, you know, the excitement of seeing students come in that first year and make such significant growth, but it's also a challenge, right? I don't imagine that it would be easy. So talk about your experience um, with the newcomer class, and you see that transition firsthand. What is it like for you? Um, so... The newcomer class is amazing in that I, we are in a very special situation this year because we are online and I wasn't sure, like, I was like, I hope they learn. I, I know they'll learn something, but just seeing how much they can actually grasp even through a screen has been really like inspiring for me. And to see them grow is it's extremely rewarding because you you know like you know immediately if they've grown like you go from them just words looking like symbols on a page to them to them reading to you that's mm -hmm. a big deal so I it's an amazing experience I definitely appreciate it and I'm always in awe of how well they adapt of how well they adapt even in hard situations so. Yeah. It's taught me to a always just ex expect the best. Like if I don't understand something, maybe it may be an issue that I couldn't possibly understand. Um, which for me, I have never been an English language learner to begin with, um, except for when I was a child. So I, I can't possibly understand what it feels like to be fully immersed in a second language that you have to perform in. Mm. And so it's definitely created more compassion in me as a teacher always approaching the girls through a mind of a their own experiences as english language learners as newcomers to the country but also understanding that they have been through things in their life and this is just one of the many things that are a part of their lives and so i have to be i have to approach the whole child rather than just focus on what i'm trying to achieve in the classroom yeah Wow, our teachers are phenomenal and we are so thankful for everything they've given to our students this year in this very, very strange year and to people like Jasmine who have started at GVP during this wild time. Um, it looks like people are still trickling in. So if you wanted to share this link, share it to your timeline or to your friends and your family, we have a lot of fun still coming today. Um, if you want to hear more from our teachers, we're going to have a few snippets throughout the rest of the program, but we'll, we'll release more of that interview on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to that as well. Next, you're going to hear another powerful song from our Women's Wisdom Unit entitled, I Used to Be a Girl Just Like You. It's a beautiful title um, from our wonderful friend and partner, Micheline, who we also interviewed a couple of years ago and wrote a song for her. Then you're going to hear from Miss Elise Witt, our artist in residence, on her perspective on GVP's music program over the years.
question, I want to go to Miss Elise, who has a legendary, legendary class, you know, the teaching, the music class we all know and love and have experienced in one way or another. Um, and it's really one where the kids are get to express their pure joy. Miss Elise, you've been leading that program for years now. Tell us about what you do, why it's important, um, and how the girls, what they benefit from, from the music class experience. Well, uh, before I came to GDP, um, I've never <clears throat> been a classroom teacher. I was a, a visiting artist and I traveled all around the state of Georgia and also beyond around the country visiting schools. And I would do a lot of residencies where I would be in a school for, I don't know, four weeks, six weeks, even longer. Um, and I would, it would be wonderful and I would teach songs from around the world and write songs with the students. But then at the end of the residency, we would have a big concert, it would be wonderful. And then it was goodbye. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had a residency at the international school where Anne used to teach. And I worked there actually three years in a row. I worked with the, um, the English language ESOL teacher um, and really loved that community. I'm a language person. I thought I was going to be a translator interpreter when I was growing up. That was my whole mm. um, trajectory. I loved music, but I didn't want to do it as a profession because I thought it would ruin it um, to study it, you know, and so I was in the language thing. And so this combination of language and music um, was the perfect um, thing for the work that I was doing. And then when I heard about Global Village Project, it was just getting started. And a friend of mine um, was um, connected with the people that were starting GVP. And so she was going to be leading song circles with the students. And she asked if I wanted to join. And so I did join her. This was the second semester of the very first year. And we would meet over at Agnes Scott College in some like really fancy library kind of room. It was wonderful. And we, that's when we wrote Imagine a Circle with the girls. Wow. From our, you know, it was our first song that we ever wrote. But um, I just, I fell in love with the idea of the school, the program. And um, I really believed in the power of music in education and how important it is to use music and the arts, but especially mm -hmm. singing um, to learn language. And I'm an improviser and every week I am mm -hmm. improvising what to teach because I ha I'm listening like um, everyone has said so far. It's like we're meeting the students, trying to meet them where they are mm -hmm. and, and wanting to help them move forward and and um i think the most exciting thing for me in this pandemic time has been um the songwriters club and getting to work with a small group of girls and really hearing them and hearing what they're capable of things that i couldn't even imagine when we're in the big group so um that's amazing thank you Thank you, Miss Elise. We're so grateful to you for building our music programs, having a vision and uh, growing it into what beautiful, uh, how beautiful it is today. And even during a pandemic, our music program is flourishing. Elise discussed our songwriters club, which you could read more about on our blog. Uh, we're also still continuing our weekly chorus lessons and our instrument lessons. We have piano, ukulele, and guitar students right now learning on Zoom, um, which is a blast and a challenge. Um, but today we have something very exciting for you, a special musical performance. Last March, before our worlds turned upside down, uh, our, our Global Village Chorus, our ensemble students, were invited to participate in something really special. Our ensemble was invited to sing backup for a song entitled Whatever Makes Your Soul Sing, sung by Alfreda Gerald. The song is finally out on pre-release, out for International Women's Day. And you're gonna get a first listen, like world premiere, can I say that? World premiere. 
uh, on our Global Village Chorus's vocals. Then you're going to see a never before seen documentary on the making of the song. What are you favorite lines is it may take some time but you will find whatever makes your soul sing so when I'm singing it I think of that you know it might take some time but you'll find it kind of gives the listener this like okay I haven't found it yet but it's it's a possibility there's hope to find it Good to see y'all. I'm glad you could come. Are you excited? Yeah. Cool, me too. Diane and Melissa Junebug and I got together a couple years ago and started talking about this and it's evolved into this project that is really reaching the hearts of women and girls. Whatever makes your soul sing. Just uplift and talk about the barriers that uh, we go through and that some have gone through that are even harder than what we can all imagine. Whatever Makes Your Soul Sing is a song about finding your purpose in life and just expressing yourself in singing. And that's one reason why we wanted y'all here to, to be able to sing with us. So you're gonna hear a voice in your headphones. Whatever makes your soul sing Whatever makes your freedom ring Women are, are the Whatever mother figure, so Mother Nature has music. Uh, the rustling of the trees, a storm, everything to me actually comes from women. Women have been through a lot in our generations and music has been an outlet for women. We have expressed ourselves through music. I kind of get teary, I kind of think about it. I'm excited about it and I can't wait to hear it. Music has uh, been such an uh, important part of my life. It has really helped me cope with a lot of um, painful experiences in my life. It has given me an opportunity to connect with people from all over the world. Okay, so now I'm just gonna play. We're gonna play it and y'all are gonna sing your part. So, sing. Let your body go. So, there you go. Sing. That sounds really good. So, sing. That's sounding good now. So, when I see the girls coming from all different countries. It, it unites us regardless of, of where we come from and our diverse backgrounds. So. Children singing shows us the pure soul of acceptance and the pure soul of, of hope and what can be. 
They're from all over the world, but they're refugees and haven't been in the country that long. I know that they've probably had much harder lives than we can ever even imagine, and in their young lives. Women can be such a great support to one another, and I think it's really important, especially today, that we stick together and uplift each other and build each other up, and that's what this album is all about, and that's what this song is all about. Oh, that sounded sweet. Okay, we're gonna catch the first one again. Just roll to give us another track, keep that. We sing different sounds, and yeah, and then when we join together, it's good and it's like, you know, I feel so good. I feel like I, I'm gonna be a famous today. For her to go away today feeling like that she's, that she's had this famous moment of this, this wonderful moment. That's good. Awesome, all right. Y'all give a hand to Miss program we we you know have the girls for three years at the most usually and I see a real evolution of their own social relationships and so it's it's when they get here they are more comfortable with their own language groups if they if they have that and they're a little shy by the time they're in the second year they they're comfortable enough with each other to argue you know which is normal <laughs> and and uh, they get kind of to know each other by the third year these girls are generally best friends mm. it doesn't matter where they came from and it's such a beautiful thing to see especially at graduation but even even the whole year before that it's just an amazing you know evolution that with these same the same children so thank you for that this is one of the yeah. as i was thinking about coming on to gvp you know and i was doing my learning about the school and the community it was just it was the sense of community and the sense of just people who support each other who really appreciate each other who value each other um and who come together for this common cause of lifting our girls up so thank you all and the people who are not here for everything that you do and thank you for this conversation that we're going to share with our community and thank you for your i, I just wish you continued strength <laughs> and talk about the power of the arts to build community right we are so thankful to our partners at we sing including diane durrett for making it possible for our students to have that amazing experience i'm sure after today they really will feel famous uh, so go ahead and subscribe or follow, follow that uh, them on Spotify, and uh, enjoy the the full track. Wow, the power of music and the arts to build community. We know that music is so important for our students' sense of community, but also safety and finding their own strength and power. And so we are so thankful for. Miss Elise and the whole team for allowing our students the opportunity. And as Miss Linda said, they really, we all grow together as a result of the arts. Next, you're gonna hear some updates from our head of school, Elizabeth, and you're gonna hear a poetry reading from some of our students. Hello again. I hope you've been enjoying the author's tea. I'd like to start by thanking our very generous donors who make our work possible especially in this past year, which has been a year of great uncertainty. Your support has made it possible for us to support our students and their families. So thank you. We hope you've been enjoying our news, new newsletter 
uh, which is now going out monthly, as well as for those of you who are our volunteers, our newly formatted volunteer newsletter. Part of our goal this year is to tell more stories about what's happening on campus and the impact we're having, as well as the changes we're making. So we've been telling more stories. We hope you're enjoying them, and we hope to continue to tell those stories many times over. We're working on a new website, which we hope to launch in the coming months, so please look out for that. Our expectation is that that new website will be yet another platform for us to engage and tell stories. I'd also like to invite you to a panel on March 30th at 6 p.m. I'll be joining the president of Agnes Scott, Lee Zak, as well as the principal of the Atlanta Girls School, Ayanna Gilhill, to talk about women's leadership as part of the celebration of Women's History Month. It'll be called Leading Unapologetically. Please join us for that if you can. We'll be sending the link to the live stream very soon, so kindly look out for that. Finally, we'd like to say a very special thank you to our sustaining members. These are people who make a commitment to a monthly gift to GVP, which is really the foundation that enables us to sustain our work. As you know, GVP's work does not stop in the summertime just because school does. It continues throughout the year, and your sustaining support makes it possible for that work to continue. I invite you, if you're not yet a sustaining member, to become one. Um, we're going to share the information on the screen here for you to use to become a sustaining member. And I thank you for making the choice to do so. Thank you for joining our tea. Thank you for being a part of our community and thank you for supporting our work. Bye-bye. Pretty woman wonders where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I, I say it is in my reach of my arm, the span of my hips, the, the stride of my step, the cord of my lips. I am a woman, phenomenally, a phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please and to a man they fall you know, start stand or fall down and their knees then, then they scream around me. I ride on honey bees, I say. I said it is the fire in my eyes and the flush of my teeth, the swing in my waist, and the joy in my feet. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenally woman, that's me. Do you understand just why my head is not there? I didn't shout or jump around or how to talk really loud. Really when you see me passing, I am it out to make you proud. I see it is this well, it is the thick of my hair, then bend the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Because I am a human, phenomenally, phenomenally, that woman that me. Wow. <laughs> wow, our students are phenomenal. And we had a great time learning this poem this week uh, for Women's History Month and discussing Dr. Maya Angelou. And you know, we are surrounded by phenomenal women here at GVP. Even today in this viewership, we have students, teachers, alumna, volunteers, mentors, community members, board members. Uh, and we're so thankful for our whole community coming together to celebrate women and celebrate our students and how hard they have worked during this crazy year. Um, we are gonna leave you with some closing words from Ms. Jasmine and one of our favorite songs. 
as Miss Elise mentioned, this was the first song we ever wrote for GVP. And we think it speaks to International Women's Day. <laughs> 